Hey United, welcome to our online experience and happy 4th of July weekend. If you're wondering why I'm outside, I'm gonna tell you that in just a second after I encourage you to check in. So make sure you check in online, especially if there's any ways that we can pray for you or if there's a next step that we can help you take. Uh, but I am outside here at Hannah Moore Park on the outdoor stage that they have because next week we will be meeting in person. We're gonna be gathering outdoors weather permitting here at Hannah Moore Park, 10 o'clock. Sundays through the rest of the summer and I'm really excited for this opportunity for us to gather to be able to sing and worship Jesus with our voices through song to take communion together uh, to hear teaching and uh, to just worship Jesus as a corporate body again in person now a lot of people have been saying hey the church is reopening we believe that we're not reopening the church has always been open and we're not going back to normal either uh, we are wanting to continue to move forward in our relationship with Jesus Jesus in this series, Made For More. And as we talk about the series, Made For More, uh, we want to continue to do that now in person in our outdoor gatherings. And if you're wanting to make sure, hey, I wanna stay home, uh, maybe you're not completely uh, feeling safe about that decision to be outside or with other people yet, we'll continue to have our online gathering for you. And so this online experience will remain indefinitely uh, for people to enjoy online. Now a couple notes about what this will look like because a lot of people will be like, well, what does it look like to have a COVID-19 approved gathering uh, right now? Well, we're going to social distance here and you can see behind me is plenty of space. We're only going to take up a tenth of this field uh, with a church our size, even social distancing. But we're going to social distance. Uh, you want to bring your own lawn chair or picnic blanket to sit on the ground. Uh, you also uh, probably want to bring a mask. Um, it's going to be really encouraged to wear a mask, especially when we sing. You know, singing outside, right now, I never would have thought that singing would be a public health hazard, uh, but apparently it is. And singing outside, especially with wind blowing, you know, germs could, could be, you know, flying through the air. And so we're going to sing, but with masks on. Uh, and if you come here with a mask on, you sit down, you don't have to wear your mask the entire time, but we, we want to be safe. Uh, we're not just coming out and gathering and you know just saying we're ignoring any safety precautions we actually want to follow safety precautions uh, but we also want our souls to be fed just by the sense of being able to be together and worship Jesus together so I hope that you can join us outside here at Hannah Moore Park starting Sunday July 12th at 10 a.m. And, and so this is going to be our experience through the summer, Lord willing and weather permitting, and we look forward to that. Um, and if there's more details that you have questions about, feel free to email us, ask us any questions, put that on your online check-in. But right now, we're going to go ahead and jump back into our Made for More series this weekend with Charles teaching us from Ephesians 2. So go ahead and pull out your Bibles, open them up in your notebook, and get ready to take some good notes for this next part of our series. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier. The dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and its regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit.
Good morning, United. It's great to be virtually hanging out with you this morning. My name is Charles. I'm just part of the team here at United, and I'm really excited to be able to come and share with you a uh, part of this series that we've been in called Made for More. And it's just exciting to be uh, able to share about this and bring kind of a burden of my heart to you and what we see in the Bible about this. And what we've been doing is in this whole series of Made for More, we've been looking and exploring about what the church looks like when it goes about bringing the fullness of Jesus in every place and space in our world. And as we've been going through this series, we spent a good amount of time uh, focusing on ourselves individually and what our gifts and goals and passions are. And that's really important work because as we figure out who we are, then we can know how we can help people more and do more things for the community. So those are really important things. But sometimes when that happens and we start using tools like the GPS and it starts telling us what our gifts and passions are and we start to feel more confident in that. Sometimes it could develop this kind of lone wolf mentality where we feel like we're going to conquer the world by ourselves and just do it all. And what we're going to see when we look at today in this whole Made for More series is we're going to see that there needs to be a little bit more unity, a little bit more of us working together. So as we find our gifts and our passions, we don't just go off and do things by ourselves. We actually team up with people and we kind of pull ourselves together. And it, we, even though we're in the middle of this series, if this is your first week tuning in, welcome. Glad you're here. Don't feel bad. You won't need to have watched the others to, to feel like you're connected in. But if you wanted to, or if you're like, what's a GPS tool other than getting in my directions on my phone? Well, what you could do is after you listen to this some other day or even later today, you could get on United Online, check out those past messages. And there's a little link there for the GPS tool. And it's just an assessment of your spiritual gifts and what your passions are. It's a really cool thing. And like I said, as we dive in today, we're kind of looking at, okay, we've looked at individually what that means to be made for more, but we're going to be pushing forward to, okay, what does it look like to work together? And what is this call for unity? And so there's a shift in our thinking today. And that shift is, as we look at Ephesians 2, the shift is going to be more moving away from independence, you know, doing things on our own, that lone wolf mentality. I'm out here conquering the world, bringing the Jesus to the community all by myself, an independent view, and more towards an interdependent view. So I need you to help me be able to bring Jesus to the community. I need you just as much as you need me because we are in this together kind of mentality. And so we're moving away from independence and more towards interdependence where we know that we need each other a little bit more and our gifts and passions start working together and blending together to move things forward. We fully need each other. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a lot of division in our world right now. Like 2020 as a year has just been like, oh, you know what? I'm going to throw everything I can to divide people. Like that's just what the year has been. Starting off with a, a quarantine situation where physically we couldn't be near each other. And then actually throwing in, hey, remember all the racism that's in your culture that has never gone away? It's still here. Like 2020 just wants to remind us of all of that stuff over and over again. And then it becomes masks versus no masks or just any other tension and it all takes place on social media and everybody's just spending time calling each other idiots and it really doesn't do anybody any good. <laughs> it doesn't do anybody any good and what we're going to see today is when we dive into the Bible we see that this is not anything that we were supposed to be and it shouldn't be what we focus on when we start gathering in groups and trying to find out that we are made for more. There should be a push to get away from all that stuff, kind of shed that stuff away and move forward with unity together. So we're going to jump in. We're going to open our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2. And so if you have one, go ahead and grab it or your phone, flip to it, or it'll be on the screen too. We're going to go to Ephesians chapter 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read through uh, this section, and then we're just going to break some of this stuff down as we go. All right, so Ephesians chapter 2, beginning in verse 11. Therefore, remember that formerly you who were Gentiles by birth, called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done by human hands, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one 
and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. And in one body to reconcile both of them in God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household built on this foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling place in which God lives by his spirit. So we just read a big chunk of scripture, and I would like us just to stop and pray over that before we dive in. God, we come before you, and we humbly open up our hearts and our minds to you. I pray that you would speak through me in this video today, and it wouldn't be me speaking. It would be your Holy Spirit bringing what you would have us learn in our homes and with our families. God, open our hearts, open up our minds to really take this stuff in and figure out what it means to be made for more and be unified together. It's your name I pray. Amen. It's interesting here that he jumps into this reminder, a reminder of the disconnect that people had from God. Specifically, he's talking to the Gentiles. Now, if you don't understand the, that term Gentiles, let me give you the two second breakdown. Back then, there was a group of people called the Jewish people. They were the Israelites. They were the circumcised people. They were the group of people that God had chosen to bring the Messiah, to bring Jesus. And so they were God's chosen people that had a close relationship with him. Anyone outside of that was a Gentile. And so there was Jews and Gentiles, God's chosen people, and then everybody else. And so he's speaking specifically to the Gentiles because this unique thing has happened where he's talking to more than just his chosen people. And it's interesting that in the midst of that, in the midst of preaching and teaching, Paul pauses and he says, remember. Now, when you're, ever you're studying the Bible, it's a really good idea if you're reading one section of the Bible to then go back or to go forward, kind of see the context and what you're looking at. And so right before this, right before in verse 11, where it says, therefore, all of this stuff that we just read, right before that, it hits Paul talking about how we were saved by grace through faith. We were made alive in Christ. We were saved by grace through faith. That's it. Everything else is, is not important, non-essential. We were saved by grace through faith. And so coming out of that, Paul then flips the coin and he's like, so because you were saved by grace through faith, because of that, I want you to remember. Remember how far you were from God. Remember how distant you were, how far you were, how disconnected you were from God. And sit in that. <laughs> he calls us to remember the very thing that Jesus himself and God forgets about. Because the whole thing and the whole promise of Jesus is that our sins are forgotten. The, th the distance between us and God is forgotten. So, Paul is asking us to remember the very thing that God has not remembered the very, very thing that God has forgotten about, that God has wiped out through Jesus, his grace and forgiveness. That's been wiped out. So after telling the church, okay, all these things about your works don't save you, grace saves you, not your works, it's grace. But remember how far you were so that you know how far you've come. When I start thinking about this and I try to remember how far and distant I was from God, that's actually something, that, a memory that comes to my head. And it's not necessarily uh, specifically related to God, but it was a time that I felt completely alone and completely isolated, completely lost, without a hope. And it was a time that I went geocaching. I don't know if you're how familiar you are with geocaching. It's basically a modern day treasure hunt where you kind of get coordinates from uh, this website and you're able to go out and look for a little box. Sometimes it's a big box. Sometimes it's a real teeny tiny box. All you really get is bragging rights. 
but it's kind of fun. And so I was on this staff retreat from where I was working before and on some whim on an evening, like kind of late in the afternoon, I decided to go geocaching by myself in the woods of Pennsylvania. And I decided after that, that it was not a good idea to have done this. So what happened was, as I'm looking for this geocache, I'm following my GPS. Uh, This is back in flip phone days. So I've got a little flip phone in my pocket. I've got my GPS here and I'm walking through the woods trying to find this thing. And what happens is there's this big ravine that goes down and it's in the woods, so it's kind of muddy and slippery. And I lost my footing trying to go down to where this tunnel should have been to get the, the, get the geocache. And what ended up happening was I slipped and fell. I slid all the way down, which I would swear to you to this day, it was thousands and thousands of feet. It probably wasn't, but it felt that way. It was all the way down this, into this ravine. And I could not get back up. Now, I, I'm an Eagle Scout. I pride myself in being fine in the great outdoors. But in this scenario, I didn't know what to really do. I was trying to climb up. Every time I would get a little bit further up, I would slip and fall again and come back down and I would try a different path and I would slip and fall again. And I'm a little embarrassed to admit that I actually took my flip phone out and instead of calling my wife to tell her I was lost in the woods and couldn't get out of this ravine and now the sun is set and it's getting really dark and I don't know where I am. Instead of doing that, I filmed a video of myself basically saying, if I die and you find my phone, (laughs) this is what happened. I love you. Uh, Not really the best moment. I didn't call her. I didn't text her. I didn't tell her what was going on because I was like, what's she going to do? She's not going to know where to come find me. Uh, I'll just, uh, I'll just figure this out. But I felt so alone and I felt so scared. And obviously, eventually I got out. I found a different way that was a little flatter. And I found the cache, which was awesome. Um, Again, all you get is bragging rights, but I did find it. I got out of that ravine. But I'll never forget the decision I made that day was that I was never going to do that by myself again. (laughs) And so Paul tells the uh, uh, Gentiles here, he says, remember how lost you were. Remember that feeling of being just utterly discouraged. No hope. No change. You know, in our culture today, right now, when I talk to people and I'm like, hey, how's this making you feel? How are you feeling about this? The answer I get so often is I'm calloused. I don't have hope. I don't think that things will change. And in our relationship with Jesus, Paul was calling the people to remember how they felt then. How they felt when they were so disconnected and so alone and so far from God. Remember that so that you can see what God did. And so what God did was a really amazing thing. And I, I want to illustrate this. I, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a dad of a five-year-old. I work at a daycare, so I bring toys. I like to have toys and stories. And so I've got a little toy to bring. And so what I've got here is I've got this little barrier right here. And I know it might be hard to see on the video, so I've got some pictures we'll throw up there too. And I've got two guys here behind the barrier. So I've got this guy is Batman. So we've got Batman right here, and he's from the DC universe. And so him by himself, he's rich. He's got lots of gadgets. He's got a lot of cool things. He fights a lot of bad guys. He's a pretty cool guy. So we've got Batman on this side here. And then on this side, we have Iron Man. And Iron Man comes from the Marvel universe. And without getting a little too in detail about this, they are two very, very different universes. They're two different comic strands. They're two different brands, if you will, without getting too involved. But I do think this would be an awesome, like, icebreaker for your groups this week is who would win in a fight, Iron Man or Batman? It's a good icebreaker, but I don't want to get lost in that. So here we go. So two very different universes, kind of like the Jews and the Gentiles. Their thought processes were different. Um, Where they came from was different. Their traditions were different. They just were two different universes. And so they're each trying to get to God in some way, right? So there's this barrier that keeps them from that. And so what happened was in the beginning of the Bible, when sin has entered into the world and Adam and Eve start eating fruit they never should have eaten, right? What we have is this barrier went up. Sin created this huge barrier between us and God. And so what we have is this barrier And what happened was between grace and faith, Jesus dying on the cross and raising from the dead, this barrier was taken down. And so this barrier is no longer here. Now, Batman's not cooperating with me standing on the Lego. He did earlier, but he's not now. All right. Now Iron Man too. All right. So this barrier is gone, 
right? So now in the first time in history, since the Garden of Eden, when man walked with God for the first time since then, now what we have is them walking and have direct access to God. And God says, this wall is broken down. You can come to me. This is what Jesus dying on the cross did for us. It broke down this barrier right here. It broke it down so that we could have direct access to God for the first time. But what else happened is this wall, this barrier of hostility, this wall of hostility between the Jews and the Gentiles is, is here. And for the first time, Paul is acknowledging it, that this is a barrier and a wall of hostility. And Paul says, what Paul says is even though this wall was taken down and in the church, we talk about this wall all the time. Paul says this wall is also taken down. This wall of hostility is also taken down. So now not only do we have direct access to God, we are supposed to be in this together. So God says, you know, hey, Jews and Gentiles, you're in. You're both in. They both look at each other and go, wait, what? We've not been in this together all along. Why are we together now? But God says, you have direct access to me and you're going to be in this together. So it's a horizontally uh, wall is taken down and a vertical wall is taken down. This wall from us to God is taken down, but this wall between people is also taken down. And Paul addresses it. And where do you fit yourself in there? When you think about the hostility that's there, when you think about the hostility between people and when it comes to race or religion or division or politics, maybe who you vote for or who you didn't vote for or the mask versus unmasked or any of these divisions, these divisive things in our culture today, where do you sit in that tension? Even right now, I imagine you're kind of squirming in your chair like I, you want me to move on because you don't want to address the tension. But Paul addresses the tension there. He says, look, this has got to come down because when Jesus came and saved us and lifted this barrier and this barrier was no more and we had direct access to God, Paul says, we also are now no barrier here. The hostility has to go away. So where do you sit there in that tension? How does that stuff make you feel when you hear about it? Because Jesus didn't just come to bring us closer to him, but it, he brought a way for us to be closer to each other on our way to him. This peace and this message was for everybody. The Jews could no longer say it was only for us. This is open to everyone. And that's the message that's there today. When we flip back to Ephesians, it says that Jesus brought peace, a message of peace to the Jews for those who were close. And then he also brought, get this, a message of peace to the Gentiles, those who were far. It's the same message. Jesus didn't change the message for anybody. He made it the same. Everyone had this message of peace. And that word stands out to me because we are called to be unified we are called to be interdependent because to get to Jesus, this is now open. This veil is open. We all have access. But there also needs to be this hostility that just goes away. The hostility between people who are just different. And unfortunately, what we see is we see churches built on preferences. We see social media feeds that are built on what you believe or don't believe or vote on or don't vote on or this and that. And it's all divisive when we're supposed to be working together. And in this series, when we're talking about being made for more and we look at our talents and our gifts and our passions, we need to look to each other because what ends up happening is there's this beautiful mix in us that when we mix together, things get better. I grew up in Delaware and I then around a little bit and landed in Baltimore. And I'll tell you what, living in Baltimore has taught me some magical things. Because the city of Baltimore is complex in its diversity. And what it looks like is, is people gathering and grouping together as a family, even if they don't share blood, they're a family together. And you see cultures kind of come together in Baltimore. And actually, there's, there's really cool things, even like the Guinness Brewery wanted to bring a brewery to the United States. And they said, where do we go? We go to Baltimore. Baltimore will support it and be like, hey, if this is a Baltimore thing, we're behind it. You see Maryland flags everywhere. You can't go anywhere in Maryland without seeing the Maryland crab flag, you know? We rallied together as a group in Baltimore. And the church 
should be better at doing that than any other city, than any other community, than any other culture. And it's not a matter of putting our culture preference aside or putting our vote, voting message aside. It's not, about, it's not about saying, oh, we all have to agree on the same person to vote for and the same food to eat at the table and the same things, uh, topics of discussion at, of which holiday is good and which holiday is bad. We don't have to come together and say, all right, we need to agree that all these are the right things and we have one mandate now. No, that's not what it means because all these cultures coming together creates a beautiful, beautiful thing that you wouldn't have normally had. And when you're able to bring that together and then look to Jesus only, that is what Paul is talking about. That is peace. And maybe you hear this and you're like, all right, fine, that's a bunch of great stuff. I feel fine about that. You can tell me that and that's great. What do I do about it? Well, work towards peace. What are you holding on to that keeps you independent from other people? that keeps you working and relying only on yourself. Maybe it's something that happened to you in the past. Maybe it's that you need to kind of work through and let go so that you can trust and rely on people and open yourself up to people working towards peace. Maybe it just is you need to evaluate your social media page, <laughs> what you post or how you approach things. Now, social media is a great way for us to kind of roll up the flag, up the flagpole and say, hey, this is what we support. But at the same time, if we're always engaged in negativity on Facebook and it's a bunch of, you're an idiot, no, you're an idiot, no, you're an idiot, no, you're an idiot, that just goes on for a long time and no one wins. And then what ends up happening is if those two people are part of the church, people on the outside go, why do I want to be a part of that? And so it kind of destroys the whole unity and the, the interdependence of what the church should be. So strive towards peace. Those are some handles quickly. Maybe it's that you just need to take your stuff and kind of, kind of set it aside for a minute and have a deep conversation with someone. And just find out what they think. Find out how they feel. And work through that. Don't defend yourself. Because look, I am two seconds away at any given moment about, uh, from saying something completely racist, completely sexist, completely uh, uh, pol that's not politically correct because I'm a flawed human being. But if I go around and defend all those things that I said and I don't ever have humility to say, hey, I messed that up. If I never can have that conversation with somebody, then I've lost the peace that Jesus talks about, the peace that Paul talks about. And I start building that division back up again. And this wall starts growing and Paul says this wall is gone. So let's not build it back up. And a great way to remember, to really remember what Jesus has done for us by taking away this barrier and taking away this barrier, a great, a great thing to do just to remember that and hold on to that is taking communion. So Jesus sat down with his disciples, gave them some bread and some juice, and they took communion. It was the last supper together. And he said, this is my body given to you. This is my blood spilt for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when we do that, we remember this first barrier being taken away. But when we also do that, we can also remember that this barrier is taken away and that people of every nationality all over the world are taking communion, celebrating what Jesus did. So I challenge you today to find some crackers or chips or some bread or whatever you have in your house and some juice or whatever you want to take as that, as that, uh, as that juice and, and that drink. And remember the sacrifice that Jesus made, that his grace and faith is what saves you, not your works, but his grace and faith. And as you do that, I want you to sit in the realization that people all over the world are doing it too. Remembering that God forgave them too. Remembering that they might have been far from God, but now they're near. That everyone who's far can be drawn near to Jesus and also drawn near to each other because those barriers are gone. Let's strive for peace together, family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Hey friends, thanks again for joining us online this weekend. I hope that as we pursue our personal calling that we see it's not a personal project, but it's a project that we're meant to pursue with family and with community. So we're not independent, we're interdependent as we follow Jesus in this made for more process. Can't wait to see you next week here on this stage and in this field at Hannah Moore Park, 10 a.m. Have a great week. Take care.